All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up Identity Server 3. So I haven't done this before, so we'll just do it here on stream together. So the first thing I got to do is I got to go to the GitHub. We want to, we have the documentation here. And I want to get the Git project here. Let's go ahead and clone this. And we'll come over here into my Git extensions. And I'll put this resource up. And we want to look at my... We're going to clone that one. And let me give it a location here. Just a second. Actually, we're fine there. Let me put it here in my... We'll make a new application here. And we're going to call this phs.identityserver3. And then also I should come back over to Pixel Horror Studios and my get resources and I should add it in here. I think I have something in my documents for that. Hold on. I do. This is where this one goes. And we'll clone it. Take a look at what we got. Um, I want to go to that folder now. I'm going to make a, just a hard copy of it over to my project. Just one second. I'm just putting it into that folder that I was saying I was going to. We want to put it here into my get. Uh, PHS signal. There it is. Okay, and I want to copy it from my... Oh, man, just a second. second please just getting some music going okay so I don't know if, if Mubot's still there but uh, this is here we go so let's go ahead and add in um, we need to add in a new we currently have this set up here as an MVC, but we're gonna make a new folder in here and we're gonna call this my identity server. Let's go ahead and add an existing project in here. Give me just a second to add it. Hmm. Just a second. So let me take a look at the documentation real quick. So we got this. You know, I think there's a better way to do this. I think we can just get the compiled version here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, um, blah, 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 blah. we want to do this one. So let's go ahead and just get started on this. So we are going to come in here. We're going to add a new project. We're just going to download it off of uh, Git, off of the NuGet store. So let's go ahead and create a new ASP.NET web application. And I want to put it here in the clients. And we're going to get rid of this one. 
and we're going to add it here and we're going to say that this is called my identity server. dhs.identity server. And we want to do it as an empty. And we want to, or I sorry, we want to do it as an MVC and we want to do it with no authorization, okay? Awesome, move on, here we go. So this thing wants me to use a certificate. I think for testing purposes, I can probably do this on regular HTTP. Uh, so let's see, it might, might reject that. So we need to add in a couple of packages to get this thing set up. Let's make sure we're in the right project. We'll set this as my setup, my startup project. And then I want to do a pop up, up, up this one. And we want to do an install package microsoft.on.host.systemweb. We also want to do an install package identity server three. Okay, so for the sake of what we're working with right now, we're going to create some fake clients in here. And what we want this to do here is that it's going to be a... We probably want this to be an S. Because these are only temporary fake clients that we're putting in, so we're going to return a new and it's going to be a and I'm sorry this is a public static i enumerable of my type client which I don't currently have or do I we'll have to see so if I look at client it just grabs from my identity which is great. And then we want to return this and what it's going to be is and we'll do a new client and we'll do this as a um, enabled equals true and then also a client name is going to be equal to my um, phs.mvc and then you want to have a client ID which is going to be equal to 3001 and then you want to have a flow which is going to be equal to authorization code and then also a redirection URLs is equal to my new list of string in here. And we'll do HTTPS colon slash slash local host. And I want to do it at port 536. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Okay. That's fine. So now we also need to have a couple of users in the same way. We're going to keep these things in memory. So we're going to call this a users, right? And we can save some time by just kerchunking what we just wrote. And this is what we called user. Is it a user? It's called an in memory user. Sorry. We want to return a list this time. And this is going to be a new identity user. And we want to put in here my username. 
going to be my admin account. My password is going to be equal to password one. My subject will be equal to, and I'm just using one for the moment. And then I probably want to add in a couple of claims. So it's going to be a new claim here of my constants dot claim types dot given name. Oh, and so this is where I put in my custom claims here. Currently, our claim, we want this to be a uh, constant. We want to not do any of this stuff. We want this to be a I can do something like a roll and we'll make him an admin. And then we also want to add in uh, like a resource one I'm imagining, right? That's fine, we'll leave it like that, okay? Okay. And now over here, we wanna make sure that we have a startup class, which we don't have. Don't I need to have some kind of an Owen reference here? Like that. Okay. And now within this class, you need to have a public void configuration, right? And it has an iApp builder in it. And this way we're gonna be using this with the Katana pipeline. So we have app.map, right? And we want to do this at my We have to have an extension on here, but we don't have it. Where is the extension? Where is the extension? Anybody see it? Is there like an app.use identity server? And this is going to have some kind of an options in it. Hey there, CyberGig22. How are you doing today? Welcome to the channel. Okay. And so now what we need to do is we want to, hmm, I think we have something called a site name and we're gonna call this my uh, identity PHS authorization server. Pixel Horror Studios authorization server. And we wanna have a signing certificates is equal to, uh, I don't think we have that. I think we're doing something with like a secret. We'll take that off and then we can do a signing certificate equals and then this thing says I'm going to have something in here called load certificate. <laughs> pixel Horror Studios, it's where the horrifying pixels are at. That's funny. Um, and now I, it looks like that there's a factory in here as well, right? And it's a new one of these servers. Service factory, sorry. And then also we want to have a dot use Mm -hmm. dot use in memory clients and that's just called my clients dot get
use in memory users is called my users.get. Uh, not this one. I want to go look real quick. What did I do here? So it's get like that. We'll just fix this. That looks good, okay? And let's fix this other one. My bad. I've, I had the wrong type there. Okay. And then also we want to have a... Could use that as a company slogan. <laughs> bad backslash become a T. <laughs> and then also we need to have a use in memory scopes, right? Sorry. And this one is going to be a standard scopes dot off. All right, this thing is definitely still gonna want one of these, so let's find out if I can get it. There. Okay, so we still need to load a certificate, right? So what do you think of Live EDU's Indiegogo? I, I looked at it and kind of scratched my head at it. I, they're trying to find their niche, I think. Um, that's, I, that's how I look at it, I'm thinking a little bit. We're gonna send them some comments, I think, by the end of the day. Um, and then here, uh, I have this certificate that I need to get here. So we're going to do a private, and then this is a X509 certificate 2, right? Some crap like that. Is that a thing? Yep. And we're going to call this load certificate. And we want to return this new X509 And then we're gonna get one of these test certificates that they give us. So we wanna do this like, um, we wanna do this, and then we wanna do slash, and then we wanna do bin, and then we wanna do identity server, and then we wanna do id srv3 test.pfx. And we're gonna go get this certificate right now off the internet. This is actually a, a string dot format, right? And now this thing is gonna be my app domain dot current domain dot 
base directory, right? And then the name of the the um, certificate, which is a IDS SRV three test. Hey there, John. How are you doing, man? It's good to see you. Welcome back, buddy. I think there are jar grammar straws for Mad Dash for cash, as I see it. It seems kind of ridiculous and redundant. Well, I mean, I imagine that they've been around since 2015, and so their investment, their investors are hopefully looking for some return. Um, and so that's, I think, some of the pressures that they're, that they're facing. So, okay, that looks pretty good. And now you need to go get that certificate, right? So this is a site here, are these at the identity server test certificates, and we should be able to download this one. Okay, let me go grab this. I wanna paste this now over here into my, uh oh, did I close that Just a second? I lost the page, just a second. Here we go, okay. Maybe about for 500 to 1,000 kind of would be more beneficial to offer more, right? I think that they need to definitely uh, yeah, it's it's like they they have a good little niche, that's for sure. But definitely, what makes them stand out above the because they're in a very comp com competitive uh, um, um, avenue right now. Now, what we need to do is we need to put the certificate here, and we want to put it here in the I don't know, just right here in the project. So let's go ahead and come into the project. I'm going to paste it in here. Change the name. And I imagine that I'm probably gonna have a problem with this when it tries to load this certificate and tries to sign for it. And now I should be able to run it. Hey there, Salmon, welcome to the channel. Okay, this thing is telling me straight out that it has a problem with... Did you change the name of this or something? PHS Identity Server MVC? Where did that come from? Oh, so for that error, we need to come into my folder and we want to delete the bin and the OBJ. And then I think we rebuild it and then we should be okay. It says that I need to add this one line to my web config in here. Here under my system.web server, underneath my modules here, you're gonna have a run all modules for all requests equals true. Okay. 
nice desktop what kind of system do i have i i don't know it's kind of old to be honest it's actually pretty old it's got four screens on it which is awesome um but it's like a asus board i think and then an nvidia graphics card it's not anything special so now what we should be able to do is we should be able to ideally this should run now let's try it again Okay, so the problem now is that I needed to add in the certificate as a copy to output, right? So here, oh, I didn't even add it, I just, hmm. So we need to add the certificate here. And then when I look at the properties for it, I want to copy always to my copy to output. Let's try it again. I see three screens, there's one, there's two, there's a third one, and then there's a vertical over here. How you guys doing, Life Coding? Thanks for coming checking us out. Still having an issue here. So if I look inside of my current directory and I look at in the clients for the identity server for the bin, it's right here. So it's not in all of those different levels. It's only here in the in. If you guys haven't yet, please click the follow and uh, check us out at YouTube. Um, if you look for Liver Dev Trying, we don't have a custom URL yet because I think I need like 20 more follows. Um, but all of these videos, even to the way back to the beginning, they're all they're all up there. So here's our identity th server three, and I think that we have some kind of an identity. dot well known slash open ID dash configuration. And that's just an open endpoint that they provide here, right? So four, 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 three identity dot well known slash open ID configuration. So I feel like at this point, I have to have this thing on SSL. So let's go ahead and change that. Do I need it? Uh, I don't remember either. I just know I'm not there yet. Let me get the link. Here's the link. So we're still getting a problem with the, hey, Lur Ling, thank you for that follow, appreciate that. If you have any questions, please put them in the channel. Join us at discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com. So here, I'm still having a problem with it loading the server, but it was a little bit the open ID configuration. So it definitely didn't, it's not shooting. So if I come over to my properties on this project and I turn this thing to enable SSL 4438, okay. And then I want to come back up here to my properties and change it to that. Let's try it again. So it's not secure, which is fine. And then we want to do this at my identity slash dot well known slash open ID dash configuration. Ah, there it is. So the problem was that I didn't hide this behind the identity endpoint. Okay, so all of that looks pretty good. So now what we need to do is we need to add in. Ah, thank you very much, CyberGig. I appreciate that. 
Uh, my live coding stuff, their API is not up, so I can't necessarily grab all of those, but I do have an XMPP client that I wrote, it's open source, that's up on GitHub um, to connect to live coding so we can integrate them into this project. Let's go ahead and add in here. We need to add in a microsoft.owen.secure.cookies. We also want to add in an install package, microsoft.owen.security.openid connect. Okay, now over here in startup, we need to do something here called a app.usecookie auth authentication, and we're gonna do a new cookie authentication. Nope. Oh no, that's fine. Let's add those namespaces. And then what we wanna do is you need to add in some properties into this thing, right? So we have something here called authority. Uh, hold on. Nope, this is just called authentication type is equal to cookies. Okay, the next one that we need to set up I'm actually working out some dynamic ways to alter GitHub pages so it doesn't take some tedious editing to update context. Same with, uh, it should just be github.com slash liver dev trying, right? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so here we need to do an app dot use open ID connect authorization. And it's gonna be this, and we're gonna have a new one of these things, which is actually going to be a open ID connect extent, no, nope, authentication options. like that. And now what we have is we have authority here. Is that. And then we have a client ID. And then we have a redirect URI. And then we have a response type. And then also we have a sign in as this cookies. What is this all about, this client ID being here? Because this should be per... Let's come back over here to my models and look at clients, and we're calling this PHS MVC. Client ID is 3001. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now it says that what I need to do is I'm ready to start up and we want to initialize um, authentication. Not a problem. So let me make sure that this thing is loading first. And it does. And so this wants me to add in a home controller here, which is fine. And we want to do a index and we want this to be a, no, we don't care about that. We're we'll do this on the about. 
and I want to do authorize here. And so now, if I was to go to about, you do not have authorization to hit this page. So this is supposed to kick me over to the Let me find it. Oh, how do I? You can see it as a user. My username is Liver Dev Trying. Okay. Hmm, second. So it's definitely telling me that it can't hit here. See, that's fine. And if you click on about, it's not kicking me over to authorization like it's supposed to. And then I guess this really wants me to do this app.map. Okay. Identity. And then we're gonna say that this is an S where we do this whole thing. Let's try that. Are you there? Um, uh, so not organizations at all? What do you mean? Uh, the only open source one that I have up there is the live coding lib. Oh, not organization. I understand. Okay, so if we look at about, the client application is not known or is not authorized. So, so far looking good. So my client is 3001, and I think this was implicit. Oh, and this is wrong. That's what it is. Like that, 3001. And we want this to be code authorization, authorization code with proof of plan authorization. Let's try that. Cool, perfect. Now we look at about. Client application is not known or is not authorized.
Hmm. Moobot, I don't know if you're out there. This is giving me some weird stuff. <laughs> hey there, CyberGigs. Join us at discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com. Let me come back up here to the top, see what else I can do to fix this. Four four three eight four, implicit three zero zero one. What's weird? It's not. It's not kicking through to the authorization page. It's telling me it's not authorized, even though I have it explicitly defined here. Oh no, it's on YouTube too. Look at that. You're all over the place. I love it. Try this. Hmm. I can't get it to, to connect through. I don't know what to do here. This is frustrating. Is it coming from that? Oh, I think I know what it is. I think we need to install this. Just a second. I think I need to add the, the certificate here. Oh, um, I need to get a thing here from this. Uh, do you remember where we got that certificate? I need to install it. So let's do that here. And if I look at it, it says that the password is that. Let's try it again. I'm more familiar with actually using it, defining proper rules. How do I set it up with entity? That's what I want to do. I want to set it up with entity. So let's try this. We're gonna put this in my uh, require SSL is gonna be false. Let's try it again.
if I came in here and change this to the original one, change this project back to not using SSL. Why won't this let me kill it? Let's do this one. Okay, let's try it. There's probably a NuGet package for it. There is, I just haven't, I'm not familiar how to use it. No connection could be made because the target connection actively refused it. So it was mostly working prior. So it does need to be on the SSL. Let me check this one more time. I want to grab this URL. Oops, this is an S. I don't think I ever changed any of the other properties, right? Let's try this again. And then we're going to try that again over here on my properties. Kick that down to my Okay. So that's looking better. And then if I look back at the clients, let's change that again to the other URL. And then up here we want to do require SSL as false. Let's try it again. I'm just trying to understand what's going on here. So it wants me to do down here on my redirect URI. It kind of is selling me to.
I don't understand what is wrong. Does anybody see what's going on here? Can you show me your client's class? Yeah. I'm not using the SSL right now, so if we get rid of that, it actually works a lot better. Let me fix that. And we'll change this thing here. Okay. Did you see it there? Move on. Oops. That should probably do it. Ha! <laughs> you said it at the same time as me. That's for sure what it is. That's for sure what it is. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, now we can keep moving on. Okay, so now. We need to load a couple more pack. No, we did that already. We did that already. So now we want to add some roles. So let's go ahead and create a new model in here and we're going to call it scopes. This one's gonna be a static class. And it's gonna have inside of it a public static I enumerable called scope. This thing has a var scopes equals a new list of scope. And then here, oops. And then you wanna do a new scope here. And that's going to be a enabled equals true. And then it's going to be a uh, name is equal to roles. And then my type is going to be equal to my scope type dot identity. My claims are going to be equal to a new list of my scope claim. With a new scope claim called role. Hey there, uh, S4NJI, welcome to the channel. How are you doing? If you have any questions, please put them in. We got a really active and supportive community here. We're setting up Identity Server 3 right now. Um, so this looks pretty good. And then we need to uh, do like a um, scopes.addRange standard scopes.all. 
And then we want to do like a return scopes. And then in the factory, we want to make sure that it's using these scopes, which is use in memory. No. No, we already have it. Use in memory scopes is there. And then we want to add a couple more claims down here to this dude. That's fine. And then it wants to ask for two scopes here, open ID and profile. That's why it includes the subject name. Now we add a, add a request to the role scope. So here in my startup, under my app, use open ID authentication. We want to have this authority client and ID scope equals admin. I guess it's not like that. It's a um, open ID profile and roles. Let's try it again. <coughs> I need to log out for this to work now. Invalid scope. And then over here, we want to do roles in the startup. Right there. And then if you look back at your user, Try it again. You're never actually using this scopes, are you? So where do you need to do that? This needs to be loaded here. That probably did it. And now it's going to ask for my user roles. It wants to know my profile information and my role information and my decision. Yes. So now I should have, if I was to like look at the roles, so here, let me change my about page. And I want to add in here this 
we're going to have this as this thing. That looks good. And then we need to change our the controller here in models for home. And we want to change my about here to be a uh, we want to return this view as a user as claims principle dot claims. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so here are our roles information that we received. So here's the name of the client. Here's the name of the ID. Claim number, instance, provider. Here's our roles. You can see that we are getting roles. So now it says when you inspect the claims on the about page, you'll notice two things. They have name, odd names, and there's more than we need. So we wanna do anti CSRF protection to the new claim subtype. So here, to do that, we're going to close this, and I believe we want to go into my startup. And here, we want to do a anti, nope, it's not there, anti-forgery config dot, I wonder if that's a thing. It is, dot unique claims identifiers equal to my constants dot claim types dot subject and then additionally we want to have a JWT security token handler dot inbound claim type map equals a new dictionary Hey there, Cobalt Ethan. How are you doing today? Welcome to the channel. <laughs> Will the stream play Gashi? I don't know what that is. <laughs> hey there, Judness. Welcome. All right, that looks pretty good. So now it wants me to look at the claims again. So now it says... Uh, Okay, so now if I look at about, okay. And now it says that uh, this is an improvement, but there are some low level claims that are certainly not needed. The, o, the OIDC middleware has a notification you can use to help with claims transformation. It'll be stored in the cookie. So here, if I look back at my startup, we have authority, client ID, scopes, a redirect URL, sign in type, and then we want to add in here a couple more. Use token lifetime equals false. And then we also want to have in here like a notifications equals, and then it's going to be a new one of these notifications, which looks like this. What are you making? I'm making an ASP.NET application called Ali Chat, and it's an RSS message router for all of the different uh, social media services. So right now we have Discord and Twitch and live coding is what we're putting in here. Um, and you'll be able to bring your own bot in if you want, your own account, which can send messages on your behalf, or you can route it and you can use the, the ASP.NET front end to route those messages, or it's a back end as a service model so that you can uh, get like a TCP stream or a WebSocket stream, or probably like an XMPP stream too. Um, of, uh, uh, of which categories of messages you want to go which place. So it's kind of like a back-end as a service model. 
Okay, so now here we want to get my var ID is equal to my... Nope. We need to have in here a security token validated. And then we're going to say that that is equal to N. And then I have this other thing. And again, it's going to be var ID is equal to N dot authentication ticket dot identity. Is this thing not going to work? Because I don't know why they are for... Here, you have to come down and do a return task dot from result of my type zero. And now here, we want to do mm, var claims identity equals a new claims identity, which is going to be a ID dot authentication type constants dot claim types dot roll pardon me Oh, you have to have another one here, which is called a constant dot claim constants dot claim types dot interesting. So this claims identity is telling me that this is a new name type and a role type. So this is a role and my name type here will be constants dot claims types dot is it like a username preferred username. Okay, so then let's come back over to the user. We'll add in this new claim and this is going to be called a constants dot claim types dot role and we want this to be a value of my preferred username which is going to be equal to admin account okay Uh, yeah, um, in the past I've been listening to music in the earbuds, but I don't have them currently. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Oh my god. Hey there, Judas. Thanks for all those song requests. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Would you implement the backend also with WCF contracts? Um, well, I'm doing everything with a web API, a resource web API and an authorization web API. So for if I wanted, oh, would you want to do the backend with the WCF contracts? No, I don't do WCF anymore. I use, I, I don't, I don't use that for services layer. I actually use signal R a lot to go between the layers or I just use my own TCP thing. The music is muted. Hello there, Noctulius. How are you doing today? It's better than one though. How's it going? I think the song request function has been unnecessary with no music is playing. With the Euro beat, I think he still hears it in his earbuds. We can't hear it. Yeah, normally I have it playing. I don't right now, but we need to hear it. I have other stuff playing right now. Can we list it for ourselves? Can we play the place? Um, that's actually all part of the bot as well, which we're going to be implementing. So if you stay with us, we will be putting in YouTube services into this as well. Okay, so now here we have this claims identity here, and we, we were bringing in this preferred name. And I believe that I can do something like a var preferred name equals my id dot find first and we want to do a constants dot claim types dot preferred username and now here you're going to have your claims identity dot add claim and you want to do a preferred name add app specific claims here and then finally you want to do a ticket which is going to be your claims nope it's your n dot authentication ticket is equal to a new ticket which is my uh claims identity i believe 
and then also my claims identity nope and then my n dot authentication ticket dot properties and now when we run this uh, why don't you use resharper uh, it really slows down the IDE. Visual Studio 2017 already gives me some problems. Um, it slows it down so much, um, and that's kind of the reason. So now we can check it, and we should be able to see our claims. Admin account. Why do you have a period up here? Cool. So now that we have our authorization and some claims, now we can add some authorization rules. So we have a built-in attribute called authorize, which we can use to annotate it, but that can lead to concerns because we are mixing our business logic and our authorization policy. So they're recommending that we use this new authorization infrastructure called install package think identity model dot on dot resource authorization dot mvc now we can annotate the contact action on the home controller with the attribute that expresses the executing that executing action is going to read the credential resource let's take a look at that I actually have Rick and Morty played right now. Pickle Rick. All right, here we go. So now here under my about, we should be able to add in here a resource authorize. And we want this to say read. And then we want this to be my contact details. And I don't know why we're putting that at the moment, but we'll figure that out. Visual Studio with ReSharper is slow. Let me save that article. Yeah, because my computer's kind of old. We could definitely put up a, a fundraising thing to try to get me a new system. Yeah, I'll take a look at that when I'm off air and see if it'll help. So now here, it's not expressing who is allowed to read the context. We separate that into separate logic into an authorization manager that knows about that actions, resources, and who is allowed to do what. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a new manager in here. And we want this to be called a authorization manager. And this one is gonna be a resource authorization manager. I learn to program with C sharp if I've only developed using Visual C? It's not a bad idea. I mean, it sounds like you have some exposure to programming, so it's definitely not outside of the outside of the possibility. Why is this so far over here? Well, there's this DLL process that sometimes eats up unnecessary CPU cycles, which you can somehow just kill. The DLL is evoked by VS, but the result is negated by ReSharp. I, I can give it a try and see. I, it's been some time since I last used it. Okay. And so now what we need is we have a couple of overrides. We have a public override called my check access async. And for this one, we're going to do a switch and it's going to be on my context.resource or you could spell right context.resource.first.value. First comes from system.link. And then here you're going to have a case called contact details. And here you're going to return your authorization contact details of my contacts. Authorize.
because this needs to have another function below it called private task of a bool called my authorize. And this is a, a wait. And this is asynchronous. And this is authorize contact details. And this is a resource authorization context. So we're going to switch on this again on my context dot action dot first dot value. And now I can put in here my case read. So it says return this eval context of the principal dot has claim. So evaluate if this claim exists here. And we're going to say that if it has a claim of role and the value of admin, then it will be allowed. And then here we're going to do an eval here, which is going to be called a context.principal.hasClaim. And now this role is going to be called my admin. And then here, our default is a return knock, whatever that is. I have not used, oh, this is authorization manager, something or other, okay. And then up here, you can also return knock. I should look up what that is. Well, whatever. Uh, not okay, not okay, not okay. That's what this means. Like that. Okay. And so now down here, we need to go back into my startup and now we need to say that in my, we need to rewire this into the startup pipeline. So that's gonna be here. And then we wanna add in my new authorization manager. Yeah, I agree. Knock is the worst way to write. Not okay. I agree. I think that's crazy. And now we want to hear, look at my manager, authorization manager, authorization manager. Like that. Okay. So now this should not allow it because we are because we don't have that role in my admin account. And then we'll add it into the admin account after that. Forbidden. And now if I come back here into my clients, And I was to add in here. Sorry, it's a user. I need to add another one here. And we're going to call this one another role. And we're going to say that this is a basic user. Isn't that what I called it? So the reason why all that failed is that you have some naming changes here. That's one. And then back here at my managers, you need to look in here and you need to say contact details. And then we want to look here and it's called basic user.
Okay. And now it still tells me that it's forbidden. Why is that telling me that it's forbidden? Uh, because it's not authorizing or something? It's using a cookie? Try it again. So it's still unhappy because it has basic user to read this contact details contact details read basic user contact details contact details read return this role of my basic user evaluate this thing if this thing's fine let's go here not to extract the string of the roles into enums no no I'm, I'm this I'm, I'm trying to implement this other authorization system uh, this uh, implement authorization system called uh, resource uh, think texture identity model so one thing that it says that I can do is I can put this up here and say that it's called handle forbidden has role geek and operator. Let me come up and check this again. Read contacts here in my home controller. Read contact details. So let me come back here. I'm going to put this here, try this again. Okay. So here it's not showing all of my roles. That's because in your in your um, um, startup, you were doing all of this different stuff here. Let's get rid of this so we can actually see all the roles. Um, 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 I want to look at the views for this home, for this about. For each one of the claims in the model, we want to look at it so it's not adding to the claim. And the user here has these claims, it's logging in. Okay, let's look here. So it's right here where I'm doing this security token validation thing. Ah, so you have to have in here called roles, right? You forgot to add this here. You need to get this from my id.findAll and it's going to be my constants.claimTypes roles. And now here we can do this claims identity dot add claim called my roles. Oops. Try it again. Mm -hmm. 
So now if I reload this page, Okay, now let's go add our authorization back. All right, so now you go to about and it should says forbidden or it's master or no it was found. Why doesn't it have a forbidden in here? That was just supposed to work. By default, we look for a view called forbidden. So it's gonna look right here in the home or the shared. So let's add one in here called shared and we'll call it a view and we're gonna call it forbidden. Hello there, Coder Craig. It's good to see you. How goes it today? Coder Craig with the uh, charity, if I recall, correct? Okay, that's fine. And now we want to, still not necessarily kicking through here, contact details, basic user or admin, basic user. So over here in my users, we have basic user as a claim added here. And then here in my Scope has roles, and then we want to check my authorization manager. We've got that one, and then here this one says read contact details. Okay, let's try it again. My favorite screen server error. <laughs> yeah, God, this is my first time doing this. Uh, this identity three, though, identity three server, identity server three. So you can actually check access directly too. So it still says that it's forbidden, which is interesting. So let's kick back. How is it still logging me in? How do I clear the cookies on that? Um, just a second. Some moment. I want to clear the browsing data for not the history, not the history, the cookies and other site data. Try it again. There it is. I hate identities and servers and such. Oh, why is that? I kind of like this stuff. Once you get it. Now we need to get a logout. Adding logout is easy. Simply add a new action that calls the sign out method in the Katana. So here in my... Well... So let's just add an, a log out real quick here. And then here I want to add a log out here. Typically the most secure thing to do is to try to simply close the browser window to get rid of all the session data. Sometimes though, we want to give the user chance to return as an anonymous user. So this is possible, but you need to 
post login redirect URLs. First, you need to register a valid URL to return to after the logout procedure is correct. So we want to go back to client and we want to add my post logout redirect URLs equals a new list called string. And then it's going to be my redirect URL, which was this one, right? I hate authorization. Authentication is not my thing. Understood. Yeah, it's nice once it's set up and you just get your tokens and off you go. I really want to set this up with the Katana pipeline, which is why I'm doing this right now. Next, the UU client has to prove its identity to log out endpoint to make sure that we direct to the right URL. This is one by sending that initial token back in the client of the So if we've discarded this token, now it's changed the claims logic to preserve it. This is done by adding the lines of close of the secure. Okay, so now we want to add a claim here, back over here in my startup. And it's gonna be a new claim and it's gonna be called my ID underscore token and it's gonna be a n dot protocol message dot ID token. So last step, we have to attach that ID token when the user logs out, we make a round trip to identity service. Also then using notification on the IDC middle on the middleware. Where is this supposed to be at? Redirect to identity provider? Is that in here? Um, security title, very validation, as of here. We probably want to add one thing in here too, right? No. Mm -hmm. I think it's maybe in clients. I have to find this this method here. I don't know where. Oh, it's maybe it's right here. It's under this notifications, I think. Yeah, here it is. And now this is called my redirect. Does anybody know where this one goes? The redirect to identity provider? Can you just read? Uh, well, it's what it's doing is it's ensuring that logout is not being fished. There's no redirect there. Maybe it's here. Redirect to here identity provider. Here we go. It equals this N which is going to go to, uh, now if my n.protocolmanage.request type is equal to my open ID connect request type dot logout, and here you need to have something return task dot from result of my zero here. Var ID token hint equals a n dot Owen context dot authentication dot user dot find first ID token. If my ID token dot uh, hint is not equal to null, then what we want to do is my n dot protocol message dot ID token hint is equal to my ID token hint dot value. So now with these changes, Identity Silver Server will give the user a link back to the calling application. Let's give that a try.
Yeah, sorry, I'm not really the most familiar with Identity Server 3. It seems like it has a lot more uh, security features than the ones that I build myself. If you go and look on the videos, we built the one that's currently here, and we're not using the Katana pipeline, but it seems like that it probably has some security risk based off this. So here we're gonna log in, and then we should go to my log out. Would you like to log out of Pixel Horror Studios authorization server? See, there we go. So now we have kicked back to the authorization server to confirm that we've logged out. So now on the identity server options, which is here, it says you can find an authentication options. This is a property which is called Uh, you'll have something called a enable auto enable post sign out auto reject setting this to true will automatically redirect back to the client after logout let's see what happens with that you're more familiar with it than me uh, well making my own has helped a lot And then when we click on about, it's going to ask me to log in. I can see my ID token. When I log out, it just does it automatically. Perfect. Okay. So now this thing wants me to start to do external authorization and it wants to do it with Google. I need to do it with Twitch though first. So it might be easier just to do it with Twitch immediately. But let me see. Currently it's about two o'clock. We're actually probably going to call it there for today. Tomorrow I'll come back and we'll get uh, Twitch set up and with authorization set up and then we'll add the Katana pipeline over to the ASP.NET project uh, for our authorization. Uh, <laughs> but we'll be back tomorrow. I'll be starting early. I'll try to get online by 6 a.m. or so uh, and then we'll go uh, till um, the afternoon. So if you guys haven't yet, please click the follow. Uh, check us out at discord.pixelhorsestudios.com. Also, uh, I'm on YouTube now. Uh, with this series, so you can go back to the first videos and see it without music um, and, and review everything that we've done up to this point. And that's at uh, Liver Dev Trine if you search for it by a user. I don't have a custom URL yet, I need about another 22, uh, 22 um, follows for that. So thanks again, guys. Hey, Cobalt Ethan, thank you for that follow. Appreciate that. So until tomorrow, guys, I will see you then. <laughs>